Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I wanna talk about yet another reaction bearing the Hoffman's name, the Hoffman Elimination. August Wilhelm von Hoffmann was an extraordinarily prolific 19th century German chemist and his name pops up left and right when it comes to the classic chemistry of the nitrogen containing compounds. And when it comes to the Hoffman Elimination, the general idea for the Hoffman Elimination starts with the primary amine. And unlike many other reactions that we have seen in our course, this one is not just going to be a reaction, but rather it is going to be a sequence of steps, giving us the final product at the end. And the first step in the sequence is going to be the methylation of our nitrogen. So let's look at how that happens step by step. The nitrogen atom here is a decent nucleophile, while the methyl group, the carbon in this CH3I methyl iodide, is a good electrophile. So we are going to show that the nitrogen going to come in and attack the carbon of the methyl iodide, kicking the iodine out, which is the living group in this case, giving us the following intermediate. Now, the reaction is typically done in the presence of the basic solvent, like triethylamine or pyridine, although sometimes we don't actually write it down. But the role of that solvent is to come in and to deprotonate that intermediate, like so, the nitrogen comes in, pulls that proton off, and we are going to get a free amine. And for as long as we have free amine, for as long as we have electron pair on the nitrogen, this methylation can continue happening. So we're going to do it over and over and over again until we get the following quaternary ammonium salt. And since the nitrogen atom here is positively charged, we are going to have a negatively charged counter ion here, which is going to be our I-, minus, which doesn't really matter too much for us, but we are still going to be showing it for now. Now, since no more alkylations are possible here, we are going to switch our reagents and the next thing that we are going to bring in is going to be silver oxide. Typically, that is going to be an aqueous solution with some addition of ammonia to dissolve that silver oxide, uh, so things sort of like a Tollens reagent. Although there are several different variations of how exactly this reaction is done, so it can be just silver oxide in different conditions. Regardless of how we bring that silver, what we are going to see here is the replacement of the I- with the OH-. So the whole role of our silver oxide is to replace iodine with the OH, and then silver iodide just goes away and drops down as a precipitate. How exactly that happens mechanistically, we don't really care about. That's just going to be a black magic box for us. Just remember, we had I-, now that is going to be OH-. And the presence of this OH- is fairly important here, because OH- by itself is a base. And what we have here with this nitrogen, this nitrogen with three methyl groups, that part can actually serve as a living group. So we have a base, we have a living group, which means that we can do an elimination reaction. So I'm going to show these hydrogens in my beta position to my living group, and then I will show how this OH going to come in, pull one of those protons off, kicking our living group out and giving us the following double bond. So the product in the Hoffman elimination is obviously going to be an alkene. And the super important point about this elimination is that we are going to be getting a less substituted carbon-carbon double bond. So this is called the Hoffman product, which you probably remember from the substitution elimination reactions, so that's where the name is coming from. So the formation of the less substituted product here is a feature of the reaction rather than a bug. Now, you might be wondering why exactly are we getting the less substituted product here? Well, let's talk about that. When it comes to this reaction, and let's redraw my 
elimination step over here. So when it comes to this reaction, the elimination can potentially give you two different products. I have the green hydrogens on the right side and I have a blue hydrogen on the left side from my uh, living group. If I were to pull off the blue hydrogen, I would end up with a more substituted bond which we often refer to as the Zaitsev product. However, if I pull the green one, we are going to make the Hoffman product the one that we know that we are forming in this reaction. And in order to understand why exactly we are getting the Hoffman product here, we need to remember one extremely important thing about E2 reactions. In an E2 reaction, the hydrogen and the leaving group, they must be antiperiplanar to each other. So if I draw a generic Newman projection over here like this, the antiperiplanar group, it means means that these two groups are going to be opposite from each other. So let's see how that looks in our molecule. So I'm going to redraw my molecule one more time and let's look at the Newman projection from this perspective. Well, in this case, if I were to draw my most stable Newman projection, I'm going to get a structure looking like that. And the problem that I run into here is that the living group, my nitrogen and the hydrogen are not antiperiplanar to each other. However, if at the same time I'm going to look at my molecule from the other direction, I will have the Newman projection looking like this and now I have a different picture. My living group is antiperiplanar to my uh, hydrogen and no matter how I spin my atom, I always going to have a hydrogen which will be antiperiplanar to my living group. And so from purely kinetic perspective, this conformation over here, in order for me to get an elimination from this conformation, my molecule would have to rotate first into the least stable or less stable conformation, which is going to be unfavorable. But my uh, version of the molecule on the bottom, if I look at it from the other perspective, it already has a hydrogen which is ready to react. And because of how bulky the trimethylamina group is, the conformational changes in this molecule going to have huge activation barriers, so it's actually fairly difficult for the molecule to change the conformation. Which means that while we're waiting for the top molecule to rotate around, which may or may not happen, the bottom one is ready to go, which means that we are going to get an elimination from the less substituted side, always. So whenever you are dealing with these reactions, double check which side has less substituents and always go with that one. So let me illustrate that with a couple of examples. Now, for my first example, I have this molecule. So my step number one here is going to be my exhaustive methylation, so I'm going to draw the product of that right away. The next step is the reaction with a silver oxide, which is going to take my I- and it will replace that with the OH. Now, from this point, there are two places in my molecule where the elimination could potentially happen. I have my uh, less substituted side on the right, and I have my more substituted side over here on the left. Since I know that I need to go with the less substituted side, I will choose this side of the molecule, which means that now I will draw my hydrogens and I will show how this OH- comes in, pulls this beta proton, like so, making my final product looking like this. Pretty easy, right? Well, let's look at another example. In this molecule, again, I have a nitrogen connected to my molecule and the very first step is going to be the exhaustive methylation, so I'm going to draw the product of that right away. Now, next, I'm going to switch my reagents to silver oxide, which is going to replace our I- with the OH-, so we are going to get the following intermediate. Now, the atom where the nitrogen is sitting this position, we know this as our alpha position. We have beta position here, we have beta position here, and we have another beta position over there. We are looking for the one with the least number of substituents, which is going to be my top right corner, so I will show my hydrogens over there. So from this point, I can take my OH, grab one of those protons, 
kick my living group out and make the following final product. So it doesn't matter where your nitrogen is, look at the nearby positions, see which one has less carbons and go with that guy. And for the last example here, I have prepared one of the probably most common trick exam questions that I have seen in a lot of tests. In this case, it looks like we are going to be doing the Hoffman elimination twice, because what I'm seeing here, I have methyl iodide and silver and heat once, and then it is repeated one more time. So that gives me the idea that we are going to get some product after the first two steps, and then we are going to continue with this reaction. So let's see how it goes step by step. So step number one is going to be our methylation, which is going to give us the following intermediate. Then we are immediately going to follow it up with the silver oxide, which is going to replace our I- with the OH-, giving us the following molecule. Now, the important thing here to recognize is that nitrogen is still a living group. Yes, in this case, it is still a part of the molecule itself, but nonetheless, it is a living group. So the alpha position is right over here, and the beta position is right there. Or the other way around, I can do the same analysis on the bottom of the molecule. The molecule here is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. So now I can show my hydrogens on my least substituted beta position over here. Of course, there is another beta position right there, but that one has a substituent, so that's not as, you know, fewer substituted one, because we want the less substituted uh, side. So, at this point, I'm going to bring my OH minus. I'm going to show how this OH minus kicks our living group out. And since in this case, the living group is the part of the molecule itself, essentially what I'm doing here, I'm opening up the ring by breaking this bond over here. And as a result, I'm going to get the following molecule with a double bond. Now, to make it a little bit easier to proceed, I'm going to redraw it in a linear form like that. So my atoms, um, let's number it here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Those atoms are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 in my redrawn molecule, so this way my double bond is still between atoms 1 and 2, my nitrogen is still sitting on atom number 6, so I didn't lose any atoms, nor did I rearrange my molecule in any weird way or form. So now, next, we are going to do the methylation again, which means that in this case we are going to get the following quaternary ammonium salt, which after we treat it with the silver oxide, going to replace our I- minus with the OH-. Minus. So now, like before, I can identify my least substituted uh, side of the molecule uh, where the living group is, show those hydrogens, bring my OH to pull those... Uh, one of those hydrogens off and kick my living group out, and as a result, I'm going to get the following final product with two double bonds. So as you can see, the Hoffman elimination is not a difficult reaction at all for as long as you're carefully following your steps. And now you can add another elimination reaction to your arsenal of synthetic tools and use it in your next multi-step synthesis when you need to make something, I don't know, fancy. And as always, thanks for watching. Boop that like button if you learned something new today, leave me a comment below, subscribe for more organic chemistry awesomeness, and I'll see you next time.